Today's film is about love, lust, and demon possession. Yep, it's Red Account, colon, My Bloody Angel. And it's a film by Takeshi Sato from 1988. And you're probably wondering, wait Spooky, there's another Sato? Yes indeed, but this one is not as good as Isayasu. Even though I've only seen this film, but I can confirm that this film doesn't really stack up against Isayasu Sato's work. But it's still a little entertaining Pinku film. Or is it Pinku? I don't really know the official definition of Pinku. This has unsimulated intercourse, which I think Pinku films only have simulated intercourse. Look, this whole thing is very confusing, but for the sake of this video, I'll call it a Pinku film. And this one is based in part by a true story. The true story I'm not really familiar with, but once I tell you the plot of this film, you might not believe me, but I assure you, it's a true story. And if you don't believe me, all I have to add is Japan, man. One of the countries with the lowest crime rates, but goddamn when they do commit crimes, they commit to them. So quickly moving along to the plot, follow me, it's a very complicated one. We follow our main character, whose name I already forgot, and she's a nurse. And one day, a man comes into the emergency room after a car accident and she falls in love with him. And he also falls in love with her. So at first, this is like a romantic film. We have narration from the woman telling us how they fell in love. And then we cut to one of the longest scene in the film, which is of course a sex scene. But since this was 1988 Japan and the uh, blurring techniques weren't really advanced, we get a lot of over the pants intercourse. And one of the things I never really wanted to see in my life was a Japanese woman with a mullet licking a, the tidy whities of a Japanese man who also had a mullet. So this is basically like looking at two people with mullets having sex. Which makes sense because this was the 80s, but goddamn did I not want to see that. It's kind of like that movie with uh, Lily Tomlith, I think, and uh, uh, John Travolta where they just look like brother and sister. And uh, yep, yeah, same vibes. Why am I so stuck up on a scene of sex? Well, you see, the movie is 55 minutes long and that scene is about 18 minutes. It's really long and not really arousing since, you know, incest vibes. But after that, we discover that uh, our main character think that her boyfriend is starting to act weird. You know, he's distant, he likes to spend some time alone. Oh, he's also a rock mu musician, so he writes some music, and she doesn't really like the type of music he starts to make. We know he's a musician because he has posters and guitars in his apartment. Yep, checks out. And whenever your partner is starting to act weird, what would you do? Would you uh, sit them down and have a conversation, try to help them, maybe, you know, talk to a friend, a psychologist, or call a priest to exercise a possible demon that started to possess him? Yep, she does the latter. So... <laughs> The highlight of the film, and also just the second part, the other 30 minutes that are left or so, is this priest doing some mantras and exercising the demon. But spooky, how does he exercise said demon? Well, he decapitates the fucking guy to own to throw salt in the wound, and then he decides to cut his fucking stomach open and pull every organ possible, and then put a shit ton of salt on the organs and inside the cut that he made into the dude's stomach only to fist the salt in there so that, I don't know, the demon can run away from the salt. I think that demons, it's, it's known that they're afraid of kidney stones so they don't like salt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how or why anybody would think that this would help, because of course you exercise the demon, you kill the fucking guy, and then we cut and he's just dismembered. No more legs, no more arms, he's just a torso without a head. And I guess all of this reminded our main characters of the good memories, so she takes the arm that has been cut off with some bones sticking out of it like it's a goddamn cartoon, and she starts rubbing her... her 
cooter with the bone of the arm and then we get a flashback to another sex scene which ends with her being covered in blood. Very, very experimental, very surrealistic. Alejandro Jaradowski would be proud. What the and eventually she can't contain herself, you know, the memories are too good and the cooter is too juicy, so she starts to blow the priest. And in my mind, this was all a put up by the priest to get blown. Which, I mean, there's other ways to get blown than killing some guy and having a, his um, mentally unstable girlfriend blow you, but hey. This all leads, of course, to the police busting them for murder. Of course, what the hell do you think they're gonna arrest them for? Unsupervised exorcism? No, he killed the fucking guy. And the narration of the uh, main character is told by her in jail. So she keeps telling our, the audience that, you know, she was in the right. The guy was possessed by a demon and he deserved to get exorcised chopped off the bits. <laughs> the end. So what did I think of Red Account My Bloody Angel? Well if you're looking for a movie to start your Tuesday morning, this is the right one because that's exactly what I did. Um, this movie is goofy, it's super short, it goes by fast and honestly you can pretty much fast forward the sex scenes because Let's be honest, nobody's getting aroused to this, and if you are, that's okay, because the sex scenes are just regular sex scenes, until we get to the end, which if you're aroused by that, you might need uh, some help, brother, buddy, buddy. <laughs> the gore is really good. The close-ups of him getting his head chopped off is like cringeworthy and then of course the, the dismemberment is awesome and the fisting of the torso with the salt, wonderful. But it's just like 20 minutes of the film so you still have a lot of padding over that. Overall, I did enjoy this film. It is absurdly brutal, it's absurdly sexual, it's absurdly funny, but I would recommend it only to a very specific crowd that can tolerate a lot of unsimulated sex to get to the good parts. Or you can just skip and get to the good parts, even though I wouldn't skip the uh, masturbation with the uh, dismembered arm, because uh, that's hilarious. So yeah, Red Account My Bloody Angel definitely makes me want to check more of Takeshi Sato's work because this was hilarious and I would highly recommend it, as I said, to, ooh, to a very specific crowd. See you guys next time. <laughs>